This is important to remember. Love isn't like pie. You don't need to divide it among all your friends and loved ones. No matter how much love you give, you can always give more. It doesn't run out. So don't try to hold back giving it as if it may one day run out. Give it freely and as much as you want. He was an expert but not in a discipline that anyone could fully appreciate. He knew how to hold the cone just right so that the soft server ice cream fell into it at the precise angle to form a perfect cone each and every time. It had taken years to perfect and he could now do it without even putting any thought behind it. Nobody seemed to fully understand the beauty of this accomplishment except for the new worker who watched in amazement. Dave wasn't exactly sure how he had ended up in this predicament. He ran through all the events that had led to this current situation and it still didn't make sense. He wanted to spend some time to try and make sense of it all, but he had higher priorities at the moment. The first was how to get out of his current situation of being naked in a tree with snow falling all around and no way for him to get down. It wasn't supposed to end that way. The plan had been meticulously thought out and practiced again and again. There was only one possible result once it had been implemented. But as they stood there the result wasn't anything close to what it should have been. They all blankly looked at each wondering how this could have happened. In their minds, they all began to blame the other members of the group as to why they had failed. There were about 20 people on the dam. Most of them were simply walking and getting exercise. There were a few who were fishing. There was a family who had laid down a blanket and they were having a picnic. It was like this most days and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. The problem was that nobody noticed the water leaking through the dam wall. There was no ring on his finger. That was a good sign although far from proof that he was available. Still, it was much better than if he had been wearing a wedding ring on his hand. She glanced at his hand a bit more intently to see if there were any tan lines where a ring may have been, and he's simply taken it off. She couldn't detect any which was also a good sign and a relief. The next step would be to get access to his wallet to see if there were any family photos in it. Indescribable oppression which seemed to generate in some unfamiliar part of her consciousness, filled her whole being with a vague anguish. It was like a shadow, like a mist passing across her soul's summer day. It was strange and unfamiliar it was a mood. She did not sit there inwardly upbraiding her husband, lamenting at fate, which had directed her footsteps to the path which they had taken. She was just having a good cry all to herself. The mosquitoes made merry over her, biting her firm, round arms and nipping at her bare insteps. I've rented a car in Las Vegas and have reserved a hotel in Twentynine Palms which is just north of Joshua Tree. We'll drive from Las Vegas through Mojave National Preserve and possibly do a short hike on our way down. Then spend all day on Monday at Joshua Tree. We can decide the next morning if we want to do more in Joshua Tree or Mojave before we head back. There was something in the tree. It was difficult to tell from the ground. Around, but Rachel could see movement. She squinted her eyes and peered in the direction of the movement, trying to decipher exactly what she had spied. The more she peered, however, the more she thought it might be a figment of her imagination. Nothing seemed to move until the moment she began to take her eyes off the tree. Then in the corner of her eye, she would see the movement again and begin the process of staring again. Explain to me again why I shouldn't cheat he asked. All the others do and nobody ever gets punished for doing so. I should go about being happy or losing to cheaters because I know that I don't. That's what you're telling me. Eating raw fish didn't sound like a good idea. It's a delicacy in Japan. Didn't seem to make it any more appetizing. Raw fish is raw fish, delicacy or not. He heard the song coming from a distance, lightly floating over the air to his ears. Although it was soft and calming, he was wary. It seemed a little too soft and a little too calming for everything that was going on. He wanted it to be nothing more than beautiful music coming from the innocent and pure joy of singing, but in the back of his mind, he knew it was likely some type of trap. There was something special about this little creature. Donna couldn't quite pinpoint what it was, but she knew with all her heart that it was true. It wasn't a matter of if she was going to try and save it. 
but a matter of how she was going to save it. She went back to the car to get a blanket and when she returned the creature was gone. There was nothing to indicate Nancy was going to change the world. She looked like an average girl going to an average high school. It was the fact that everything about her seemed average that would end up becoming her superpower. Betty was a creature of habit and she thought she liked it that way. That was until Dave showed up in her life. She now had a choice to make and it would determine whether her lie remained the same or if it would change forever. Are you getting my texts? Question mark she texted to him. He glanced at it and chuckled under his breath. Of course he was getting them, but if he wasn't getting them, how would he ever be able to answer? He put the phone down and continued on his project. He was ignoring her texts and he planned to continue to do so. The headache wouldn't go away. She's taken medicine but even that didn't help. The monstrous throbbing in her head continued. She had this happen to her only once before in her life and she realized that only one thing could be happening. Since they are still preserved in the rocks for us to see, they must have been formed quite recently, that is geologically speaking. What can explain these striations and their common orientation? Did you ever hear about the Great Ice Age or the Pleistocene Epoch? Less than one million years ago, in fact, some 12,000 years ago, an ice sheet many thousands of feet thick rode over Burke Mountain in a southeastward direction. The many boulders frozen to the underside of the ice sheet tended to scratch the rocks over which they rode. The scratches or striations seen in the park rocks were caused by these attached boulders. The ice sheet also plucked and rounded Burke Mountain into the shape it possesses today. There was nothing else to do. The deed had already been done and there was no going back. It now had been become a question of how they were going to be able to get out of this situation and escape. It was that terrifying feeling you have as you tightly hold the covers over you with the knowledge that there is something hiding under your bed. You want to look, but you don't at the same time. You're frozen with fear and unable to act. That's where she found herself and she didn't know what to do next. There were only two ways to get out of this mess if they all worked together. The problem was that neither was all that appealing. One would likely cause everyone a huge amount of physical pain while the other would likely end up with everyone in jail. In Sam's mind. There was only one thing to do. He threw everyone else under the bus and he secretly sprinted away leaving the others to take the fall without him. Finding the red rose in the mailbox was a pleasant surprise for Sarah. She didn't have a boyfriend or know of anyone who was interested in her as anything more than a friend. There wasn't even a note attached to it, although it was a complete mystery. It still made her heart jump and race a little more than usual. She wished that she could simply accept the gesture and be content knowing someone had given it to her, but that wasn't the way Sarah did things. Now it was time to do a little detective work and try to figure who had actually left the red rose. It was going to rain. The weather forecast didn't say that but the steel plate in his hip did. He had learned over the years to trust his hip over the weatherman. It was going to rain, so he better get outside and prepare. Stormy is a dog. She is dark gray and has long legs. Her eyes are expressive and are able to let her humans know what she is thinking. Her tongue is long, pink, and wet. Her long legs allow her to sprint after other dogs, people or bunnies. She can be a good dog but also very bad. Her tail wags when happy or excited and hides between her back legs when she is bad. Stormy is a dog I love. I haven't bailed on writing. Look, I'm generating a random paragraph at this very moment in an attempt to get my writing back on track. I am making an effort. I will start writing consistently again. Cake or pie? I can tell a lot about you by which one you pick. It may seem silly. But cake people and pie people are really different. I know which one I hope you are, but that's not for me to decide. So, what is it? Cake or pie? He knew what he was supposed to do. That had been apparent from the beginning. That was what made the choice so difficult. What he was supposed to do and what he would do were not the same. This would have been fine if he were willing to face the inevitable consequences but he wasn't. Josh had spent year and year accumulating the information. He knew it inside out and if there was ever anyone looking for an expert in the field, 
Josh would be the one to call. The problem was that there was nobody interested in the information besides him and he knew it. Years of information painstakingly memorized and sorted with not a soul giving even an ounce of interest in the topic. Sitting in the sun, away from everyone who had done him harm in the past, he quietly listened to those who roamed by. He felt at peace in the moment, hoping it would last, but knowing the reprieve would soon come to an end. He closed his eyes the sun beating down on face and he smiled. He smiled for the first time in as long as he could remember. The house was located at the top of the hill at the end of a winding road. It wasn't obvious that the house was there, but everyone in town knew that it existed. They were just all too afraid to ever go and see it in person. The piano sat silently in the corner of the room. Nobody could remember the last time it had been played. The little girl walked up to it and hit a few of the keys. The sound of the piano rang throughout the house for the first time in years. In the upstairs room, confined to her bed, the owner of the house had tears in her eyes. The coin hovered in the air spinning over and over again. It reached its peak and began to descend. Both boys were pleading with it to land a certain way but the coin had already made up its mind on what it was going to do. Balloons are pretty and come in different colors, different shapes, different sizes, and they can even adjust sizes as needed. But don't make them too big or they might just pop and then by by balloon. It'll be gone and lost for the rest of mankind. They can serve a variety of purposes, from decorating to water balloon wars. You just have to use your head to think a little bit about what to do with them. Waiting and watching. It was all she had done for the past weeks. When you're locked in a room with nothing but food and drink, that's about all you can do anyway. She watched as birds flew past the window bolted shut. She couldn't reach it if she wanted to with that hole in the floor. She thought she could escape through it but three stories is a bit far down. He sat staring at the person in the train stopped at the station going in the opposite direction. She sat staring ahead, never noticing that she was being watched. Both trains began to move and he knew that in another timeline or in another universe, they had been happy together. He couldn't move. His head throbbed and spun. He couldn't decide if it was the flu or the drinking last night. It was probably a combination of both. I'm heading back to Colorado tomorrow after being down in Santa Barbara over the weekend for the festival there. I will be making October plans once there and will try to arrange so I'm back here for the birthday if possible. I'll let you know as soon as I know the doctor's appointment schedule and my flight plans. He scolded himself for being so tentative. He knew he shouldn't be so cautious but there was a sixth sense telling him that things weren't exactly as they appeared. It was that weird chill that rolls up your neck and makes the hair stand on end. He knew that being so tentative could end up costing him the job, but he learned that listening to his sixth sense usually kept him from getting into a lot of trouble. There were little things that she simply could not stand. The sound of someone tapping their nails on the table. A person chewing with their mouth open. Another human imposing themselves into her space. She couldn't stand any of these things but none of them compared to the number one thing she couldn't stand which topped all of them combined. It had been her dream for years but Dana had failed to take any action toward making it come true. There had always been a good excuse to delay or prioritize another project. As she woke, she realized she was once again at a crossroads. Would it be another excuse or would she finally find the courage to pursue her dream? Dana rose and took her first step. The light was out on the front porch of the house. This was strange. Judy couldn't remember a time when she had ever seen it out. She hopped out of her car and walked to the door. It was slightly ajar and she knew this meant something terrible. She gently pushed the door open and all her fears were realized. Surprise. Happy birthday. Everyone shouted, my pincher collar is snapped on. Then comes the electric zapper collar. Finally, my purple at home collar is taken off and I know I'm going for a walk to the dog park. I'm so excited to see my friends. I hope Spike or Thunder are there already. They're the most fun to chase and tumble with. My human is pretty strict with me. I'm only allowed on the grass and not on the sidewalks. I think she's afraid I'm going to jump on the other humans. I don't understand why everyone else gets to jump on the benches and run wild on the sidewalks. They don't listen to their humans. 
hours, I know I could ignore mine but if I do she may zap me and it's just not worth it, she probably wouldn't let me back at the dog park if I didn't listen to her, I just love the dog park, I guess we could discuss the implications of the phrase meant to be, that is if we wanted to drown ourselves in a sea of backwardly referential semantics and other mumbo jumbo, maybe such a discussion would result in the determination that meant to be is exactly as meaningless a phrase as it seems to be, and that none of us is actually meant to be doing anything at all, but that's my existential underpants underpinnings showing, it's the way the cookie crumbles, and now am I want a cookie, one can cook on and with an open fire, these are some of the ways to cook with fire outside, cooking meat using a spit is a great way to evenly cook meat, in order to keep meat from burning, it's best to slowly rotate it, hot stones can be used to toast bread, coals are hot and can bring things to a boil quickly, if one is very adventurous, one can make a hole in the ground, fill it with coals and place foil covered meat, veggies, and potatoes into the coals, and cover all of it with dirt, in a short period of time the food will be baked, campfire cooking can be done in many ways, there wasn't a bird in the sky, but that was not what caught her attention, it was the clouds, the deep green that isn't the color of clouds, but came with these, she knew what was coming and she hoped she was prepared, the young man wanted a role model, he looked long and hard in his youth, but that role model never materialized, his only choice was to embrace all the people in his life he didn't want to be like, the computer wouldn't start, she banged on the side and tried again, nothing, she lifted it up and dropped it to the table, still nothing, she banged her closed fist against the top, it was at this moment she saw the irony of trying to fix the machine with violence, the rain was coming, everyone thought this would be a good thing, it hadn't rained in months and the earth was dry as a bone, it wasn't a surprise that everyone thought a good rain was what was needed, but they never expected how much rain would actually arrive, he slowly poured the drink over a large chunk of ice he has especially chiseled off a larger block, he didn't particularly like his drinks cold, but he knew that the drama of chiseling the ice and then pouring a drink over it looked far more impressive than how he actually liked it, it was all about image and he'd managed to perfect the image that he wanted to project, have you ever wondered about toes, why 10 toes and not 12, why are some bigger than others, some people can use their toes to pick up things while others can barely move them on command, some toes are nice to look at while others are definitely not something you want to look at, toes can be stubbed and make us scream, toes help us balance and walk, ten toes are just something to ponder.